Welcome back. Well, it's been dubbed the murder hornet, and now people in Western Canada are being warned about it. The hornet was reportedly seen in British Columbia and Washington State last year, and the B.C. government is warning the hornet may return this spring as they wake up from their winter nesting. The hornet's stingers are able to pierce normal beekeeper suits and contain a potent neurotoxin that can be deadly to humans. Well, Timothy Lawrence joins me now from Cookville, Washington. Timothy is an entomology professor at, univer at Washington State University. He is an, he's, an, he's got an expertise in bees. So, Timothy, I think a few of our viewers here are feeling a little uneasy. Talk to us about these hornets and the, the threats that they pose to the bee population. Well, first of all, the uh, name murder hornet is a misnomer. They're uh, a large, aggressive hornet when they're uh, defending their nest or when they're uh, harvesting pupa or larva from honeybee colonies. But, uh, you know, they're not going to be chasing school buses down the road. So people should not totally freak out about this. It's a, it is a concern for honeybee populations, but we don't know the extent of the infestation either in D.C. or in Washington. And uh, we don't know exactly what the economic impact will be if they are established. If they are in there. Okay, I'm glad that you uh, you clarified that because, of course, there is a lot of bit of concern. And these are a fairly large type of bug, as we're showing some uh, viewer, um, we're showing, showing some footage here to our viewers. Um, but what kind of work is, are scientists now doing to prevent this population, this type of hornet population, from growing? As you say, we're not sure what the extent is going to be, but what measures are being taken? Well, right now, Washington State Department of Ag, and I assume the British Columbia of uh, Department of Ag are ex doing extensive trapping, looking for the hornet. Right now, the, the queens are out trying to establish new nests. Only the queen overwinters. Mm -hmm. So they establish a new nest, and they slowly build up population over the summer. And then in uh, late August or early September, the nest is large enough where they start producing reproductive. And at that point, the demand for carbohydrates drops and the demand for protein increases. So they're really going after those juicy, fatty, young larvae and pupa from honeybee colonies. Right. And honeybees don't have a natural defense mechanism mm -hmm. like the Asian bee does have. And, that, and you mentioned the Asian bee there. We were talking about Japanese bees and we had, and, and you can talk to us a little bit more about the, you know, or clarify for us, they figured out how to defend themselves against these hornets by swarming them, creating a, a bit of a heat circle, if you will, and that actually kills the hornet. Yes, it also kills about 25% of the honeybees. But uh, they, so they evolved with the Asian honeybee. And so they've developed this natural mechanism that prohibits them from uh, the, the attack on the hive from happening like it does with the Ameri uh, the European honeybees. So the uh, with the European honeybees, they start attacking whoever is uh, attacking their nest, and mm -hmm. the, uh, a matter of 20 or 30 hornets can wipe out a colony of 30 to 50,000 honeybees within a few hours. And then the hornets enter the hive and consume the uh, pupa and then the larva of the, the colony because of the high protein content that they need to feed their reproductive. So having that threat then to the bee colony, I mean, what needs, what can be done, what should be done here to protect the bees? Well, the first thing is we need to find out what, how extensive the infestation is and right. eliminate them if at all possible. Uh, other than that, we'll just have to wait and see uh, what type of, uh, how heavy the infestation is and, and how big of a problem it's going to be for beekeeping operations here in Canada and in the United States. Beekeeping in, in our countries is very different than beekeeping in Asia, where they have very small apiaries where a hornet nest can wipe out an apiary within a short period of time. Here we have much larger operations, and uh, we don't know what's going to be the impact for uh, the, the hornet's going to have on those types of operations. Beekeepers are very innovative, and so I'm sure I'm, I'm already getting calls of beekeepers developing right. mechanisms to try and exclude so okay well and we'll see what happens when that hibernation ends for these hornets all right timothy lawrence entomology professor at washington state university timothy great to have you on the program appreciate this